Hello, this is a tutorial for Level 3 students all about thermoregulation. Thermoregulation is a homeostasis process, the process that is going on the whole time in our fantastic, wonderful, clever body about maintaining the core temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. The purpose of thermoregulation is to keep the organs working uh, healthily and they can only do their job if it's at 37 degrees Celsius. So, for example, the gaseous exchange, your oxygen and carbon dioxide happening in the lungs, is most effective at 37 degrees Celsius. If you get an infection like a cold and get a temperature, this gaseous exchange doesn't work as well. So 37 degrees is what it needs. Now, if you drop way below 37 degrees, it's called hypothermia. And sometimes that is a, a malfunction of the nervous system. Uh, if you get super, super hot, then it's called hypothermia. Why? Right. We'll start with the story of thermoregulation. OK, external environment temperatures change. So on a summer's day, it's hot. On a winter's day, it's cold. Thermoregulation is about keeping that core temperature, the torso, at 37 degrees, despite these external environment changes. The internal environment then is the name given to the uh, organ core, core temperature. So you have external environment and then in the body you have internal environment. So how does it all work? It, different parts of the body have got receptors, uh, specifically called thermoreceptors. So underneath the skin, you have got uh, different receptors that then send messages to the brain, nerve messages, sensory nerve messages. OK, so receptors under the skin uh, and there are actually uh, in other parts of the body. More specifically, there is more thermoreceptors in the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is the middle part of the brain and it's receiving this information. The blood is flowing through it, through it and saying that the message is coming back from the skin uh, and the temperature then in the blood that is going through the hypothalamus is changing. OK, so what are receptors? Receptors are receiving the information and sending a message to the brain. Also, that message is called negative feedback. So receptors in the skin send negative feedback to the brain. It's a message that says we need to do something about this. So the external environment causes the receptors to send messages called negative feedback and their nerve messages to then tell the internal core what it needs to do. If I move these out the way now. Following the negative feedback to the brain, there are messages that then need to be sent out to act to then bring that temperature either cooler or hotter, uh, depending on the actions needed. The messages that are going out are positive feedback, whereas the messages coming in from how hot it is is negative feedback. OK, and it all ends up with the brain positive feedback, negatives coming in, it's quite warm, positive feedback, well, we need to do something about that. Okay, effectors, different to receptors. Effectors are doing the actions to cool our body or to warm our body up. So, one effector is sweat glands. Sweat glands are just underneath the skin, they produce a fluid, they produce sweat, which is then evaporated to cool the skin. So it's cooling it by evaporation. Here you have um, a sweat gland that is not producing sweat. And here you have one that is producing sweat. So this one is constricted and stayed where it is. This one is letting sweat come up. So in addition, to, on that picture also, there are hairs where the muscle action raises these to try and trap the air to retain heat. Uh, trap the air to retain heat, holds it up, tries to retain more heat or not. And then if it's really quite cold, another effector is that you shiver. 
So your effectors are sweat, raising the hair, shiver if you're cold. There is one other effector that is, I think, the best and the cleverest, and that is having pink cheeks and being uh, having your skin quite pink uh, as extra blood then flows to the surface of your skin so you can radiate the heat off, cooling the blood. OK, or in contrast, on a cold day, you might get white fingers if you've got really cold hands. So pink cheeks and red body, white cheeks, um, sometimes blue lips if you're really cold and white fingers, which you probably all experience. So the positive feedback tells the blood capillaries under the skin to either send blood to the skin or to keep it inside. This is called vasodilation. I'll explain it in a minute. But the word dilation, you may um, have heard it when it comes to giving birth. Uh, so they say that the cervix dilates before a baby comes up. So dilation is opening up. And then we have vasoconstriction, which is the opposite. Let me draw it on here. I think I've got it here. You have vasoconstriction that then stops the blood going to the surface of the skin. I shall explain. OK, a normal artery size is like this. The inside of an artery is called lumen. So inside a blood vessel is called lumen. When it is hot, vasodilation happens and the blood can quite easily flow to the surface of the skin. That's your pink face, your pink cheeks. And then it is radiating this heat off as well as sweating, which is evaporating it. However, on a cold day, on a cold day, it actually tries to keep it away from the skin. So there is still blood going to the skin, but it's actually constricting around here and sending it there where it is opening up there to sending it up. So vasodilation, opening up to let the blood going to the skin surface. Vasoconstriction, the opposite, keeping it away. So the muscle opens the artery or closes the artery. It's a muscle action and it's all about radiating off heat. I have an image of it that's probably better than my drawing. Let me show it to you. OK, light. So this is vasoconstriction. The most of the blood is staying underneath the skin a little way away. Vasoconstriction. Then you have vasodilation where the blood is going to the top. Dilation, uh, that is sending it this way, constricting, sending it that way. OK, you need to revise this because you need to be able to use these two terms correctly. I have a more basic picture, but I'm sure you'll be able to find better ones on the internet that explains the whole process as well. Hopefully now you have a better idea of what thermoregulation is. So the terms that you are needing are external environment, internal environment. You need to know what receptors are, thermoreceptors and effectors. You need to know the uh, words uh, such as negative feedback and positive feedback to be able to explain thermoregulation. Um, if you can imagine, vasodilation is squeezing of this and vaso, uh, uh, constrict, oh, sorry, vasoconstriction is squeezing it, vasodilation is opening it. So the blood flow either goes to the surface or stays away from the surface. Now, you need to revise this. When it comes to a process of revising uh, a body mechanism, particularly homeostasis, I strongly suggest that you do it in a manner that's a step by step, because often the first step triggers your uh, memory to remember the second step and again. So thermoregulation uh, is a process that is happening continuously. So it's starting with the external environment, moving down to uh, uh, positive feedback, effectors, raising the hair. OK, you need to be writing that to show your understanding of thermoregulation in an exam answer. 
if we have a look here, uh, it might help you to draw. OK, so if I go over this, uh, the hypothalamus and the skin has got those thermoregulations and the sensory nerve sends it back to the brain to then look at the effectors. So the brain thermoreceptors and the skin receptors are, are acting on the external environment. Messages are sent to the effectors because they need to take action to remember and uh, maintain the core temperature at 37 degrees. OK, one of the effectors could be sweating if it's hot uh, and that is evaporating and cooling the skin. Another one then is uh, the vasoconstriction and vasodilation, which is taking the skin uh, blood to the skin or not. You have the muscle action then of shivering and raising the hair. That's another effector. And then the whole point of this is trying to keep the blood temperature consistent in the core at 37 degrees. Now, sometimes with your hands, it may drop just a few naught point whatever. But when it gets to the core, it needs to be the right temperature in order for the um, organs to function properly. OK. Now, you can find all information and resources for this to learn about it more uh, in this health and social care shop. OK, if you put in the uh, well, actually, you can search it under health and social care HSC resources or put in that in the uh, web address. You have a search facility here so you can put homeostasis, which um, <clears throat> is a full package that explains everything from uh, blood glucose homeostasis to osmoregulation, but it's also got thermoregulation in there. So if you like this video and you have understood about thermoregulation, then please do give me some feedback because I could like to improve and I can act on feedback. I will also uh, I will have also done videos about the cardiac cycle and the stroke uh, volume. Um, things like osmoregulation and the gaseous exchange to help you understand as level three students what you need to be doing and how to revise.